Today is Thursday, March 16, 2023, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Welcome to Wilderness Wanderings. My name is Renita Ray Thompson, and I have the privilege to serve as a partner missionary with you at Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church. I want to talk to you today about a time in Scripture when we observe a move from a garden to a graveyard, and then from a graveyard to a garden. We will be looking at a few different texts during our time together. I don't know about you, but the joy of serving a risen Savior can often be overshadowed by seeing suffering and death all around. From a shooting at a traffic stop, to kidnappings in Nigeria, to the war in Ukraine, the words, Oh, death, where is your victory? can sometimes ring hollow. But recently I saw anew the shift in scripture from a garden to a graveyard and then back again from a graveyard to a garden. The Garden of Eden moved from being a garden to a graveyard in the recounting of the fall in Genesis 3. Adam and Eve, who were created to work and care for the garden, suddenly knew death. The garden that was created for flourishing and life had the shadow of death cast over it. In Genesis 3, 22 and 23, we read, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and also take from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. From that time on, the world knew daily the reality of the graveyard. But then Jesus came to earth, lived and died, and was buried in a tomb, which was located in a garden. He defeated death in that garden. And the first person he appears to, Mary Magdalene, confuses him for a gardener. John 20, verse 15 says that he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you have looked for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. As it turns out, she was not mistaken. Our God and Father and Jesus' Son are indeed gardeners. Was God actually a gardener, though? Did he actually work with his hands? In Genesis 2, 7 through 9, we read, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. We hear the words, the Lord God formed, the Lord God planted, and the Lord God made. God didn't simply use his voice in creation. He got his hands dirty while making humanity and the garden. During Jesus' time on earth, his hands got dirty again, very dirty, callous, splintered, and injured as a carpenter, and then scarred as the nails pierced them, the result of an unjust trial, sentence, and execution. You can't garden from a distance. You must get your hands dirty in the soil. And thankfully, God does not garden from a distance. And each of us in our own gardens cannot garden from a distance. And so our hands get dirty with the invasive species of sin that has filled our own gardens, in our homes, churches, communities, nations, and world. But death has lost its victory and has lost its sting. The graveyard has become a garden again. And we join God who saved us by getting our own hands dirty. We get in the dirt, we pull the weeds, we plant the seeds, we labor as gardeners using our time, treasure, and talent. And in so doing, we strive to join with our Father in bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth a little bit at a time. May God bless you in that work. As you journey on, go with the blessing of God. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.